check out this new large format 3D scanner that I got from 3D Maker Pro. And by large format, I mean you can scan parts of a car really quick, or scan an entire helmet in just a few passes. And this captures a scan area of 250 by 400 millimeters. And you can scan an object up to 5,000 millimeters cubed, or about 16 and a half feet cubed, which is honestly a really large area. And surprisingly, you can get this scanner for under $400. And the version I got is the premium package, which comes in this really nice carrying case. And along with this case, it comes with a tripod and turntable. Table. And this will up the price to about $140. And in my opinion, totally worth it for all the accessories, along with having a nice way to store it all and transport it. The scanner itself feels pretty good in the hand. It's not overly heavy, but it also doesn't feel cheap at the same time. That being said, it'd be nice to have rubber grips on the side of this. That way it'd be more secure when using it in handheld mode, kind of like the Mole 3D scanner that they also make. And the physical manual for this is basically a single sheet of paper, just showing you how to plug it all in and get it set up. And you'll have to follow the QR code on the front to learn how to use the software. And with everything all set up for a scan, you're going to have to have your turntable pretty far away from the scanner, just so things will be in the focus range due to this being a larger format scanner. And I'm going to be scanning this Boba Fett bust that I 3D printed a while ago just to test and see how well it can pick up details. And I'm actually surprised how well this scanner is picking this up, seeing that this is on the smaller end of things that you should be scanning with it. And if we take a closer look at this, you can see that there is a decent amount of detail in this. And if we take a look at the process scan, you can see it did a decent job, but it definitely didn't pick up all the fine details and kind of just smooth things out. But it did come out a lot better than I thought it would. And this was from only one scan, at only one angle. And it's not really meant to scan stuff like this. So let's try something that it's more suited for, like my motorcycle helmet. But we do have a problem because this is a black helmet with a clear lens. And the scanner really isn't picking it up at all, as you can see. So I'm going to be spraying it with this 3D scanning spray, which will turn the entire thing a matte white and will completely dissolve in about four hours, leaving no trace. That being said, this stuff is not cheap, coming in at about $30 a can. But if you're able to wash your object afterwards, you can coat it in something cheaper like cornstarch. But anyways, with that all sprayed, the scanner is able to pick it up now with no problem. And I was able to get a pretty decent scan of the helmet. There was a little bit of weirdness on the lens, and it looks like this was due to the spray on it evaporating a lot faster than it should have, mostly because of how warm it was the day I was doing this. And you can see all the spots that have already evaporated on this. So if you do end up using this stuff, make sure it's not really hot out. But anyways, I wanted to scan something a little bit bigger, and wheels are usually pretty hard to scan, just because they're pretty symmetrical and the scanner tends to get lost. And I didn't do a full detailed scan of this, just a once over, and it looks like it did a pretty good job and didn't get lost whatsoever. And after cutting everything else off and just processing the front, it came out pretty decent for about a 30 second scan. And surprisingly enough, this is totally usable if I wanted to make something like a turbo fan for this. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you can scan large parts of a car as well, but it's also not the easiest thing in the world to do. And you pretty much have to do multiple scans and kind of align and stitch them together, which is easy enough to do in the scanning software itself. And you can get some really nice results out of this. But as you can see, there's no scan data for my hood. And this is because it has no details to it for the scanner to pick up on and follow along. And with other scanners, you can use markers to help with this problem. So I thought I'd give that a try and see if it helps at all, which it didn't. You can see around the door and everything, it's scanning okay. And then as soon as I start going over the hood, it starts to stack up on itself and not really move. And the same thing along the hood and the fender, where there's no real details, it just kind of stacks up until it hits the headlight. And I also put a bunch of blue tape all over it to see if that would help, which it didn't. And after contacting the company that made the scanner, they gave me some suggestions to use the tape like this and to switch the scan mode from features to texture. And this actually worked really well, but it was extremely laggy on my computer that I'm using for this. So it's definitely a way more demanding way to scan things. But hey, as you can see, it works. And I was able to align it with all my other scans. And now I have hood data with a small hole in the center, but I definitely was able to get some pretty decent scans out of the scanner. And it's able to do this pretty quick just because of how big the scan area is. And after using the software for a while, it's actually really easy to use, but it's not intuitive at first. And there definitely needs to be a full tutorial on this software so people can actually use it properly without spending hours trying to learn how to use it like I did. But even with these small problems with the scanner, this is definitely going to be a go-to scanner for me because for the most part, it just works as long as there's detail. And of course, there's going to be cleanup on anything you 3D scan. And this is even the case on the $15,000 scanners. So you're also going to need to learn how to deal with 3D software or pay someone to do it. And one thing I definitely need to buy for this is a longer cable if I'm going to be scanning cars because the supplied cable is just way too short. There's also a mobile power pack for this so you don't have to plug it into the wall and you can scan things with your phone, which would come in really handy if you're out and trying to scan things. And it is really nice to see that consumer grade 3D scanners are getting a lot better and a lot cheaper. And the software side of stuff seems 
seems to be getting a lot better as well. But those are just my thoughts on this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're looking for anything that I used in this video, I'll have everything linked in the description below. And you might even find some discounts down there as well. And why not check out the playlist of all the other 3D scanners that I've done videos on? That should be on the screen now. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.